All right, well, the results we obtained last time from our 1D code were not very satisfying. We saw a wave propagating to the left and to the right away from the hard source set to a square pulse. But the amplitudes of the wave didn't match the characteristics of the source. There shouldn't be any change in amplitude of a wave propagating through free space. But we can see in this plot that amplitudes we have are above and below the source electric field amplitude of 1 and 0. We should find a way to improve the model so that our calculations more closely match what is expected physically. But what in our model needs to be improved? Fortunately, the scenario we're modeling so far is simple. We just have a plane wave propagating through free space. So we can examine the exact analytical answer and compare it to the result from our simulation. The only issue is that the source time waveform we've used so far is a bit complicated. It's a square pulse which requires a lot of sinusoids at different frequencies to create. So for this comparison, let's simplify the source time waveform and assume the source is just a single sinusoid. This will simplify our calculations and comparison. For simplicity, let's just consider the plane wave propagating in the positive x direction and ignore any wave propagating in the minus x direction. From an introductory electromagnetics course like ECE 3300 taught here at the U, you may recall that analytically, the electric field of a z-polarized plane wave propagating in the x-direction has a time domain solution with this form. The electric field is a vector, function of space and time, pointing in the z-direction, has some amplitude e naught, cosine omega t minus kx. Notice the maximum amplitude of the sinusoid sinusoidal electric field in free space is always E naught. Omega here is the wave angular frequency, 2 pi f, and k here is the wave number. For convenience, I'm going to simplify the notation here by adding z subscripts to tell us this electric field is pointing in the z direction. So I'm just going to write E z, and now we don't need the z hat anymore because the subscript here says it's in the z direction. Then since the wave is z polarized and is propagating in the x direction, by the right hand rule the h field must be in the y direction. So h y naught will be the amplitude of the h component. What we're going to do is plug these solutions for the electric and the magnetic fields into the 1D time domain pointwise form of Ampere's and Faraday's laws, the analytical form of Ampere's and Faraday's laws. Then we're going to simplify the expressions and see what we can learn from them. If we plug the solutions for EZ and HY into this form of Faraday's law, we're going to get the partial x derivative of E z naught cosine omega t minus kx over, that's partial x derivative, and that's equal to mu d h y naught cosine omega t minus kx, partial time derivative. On the left side, for the partial space derivative, we can take the derivative of cosine. So we're going to get E z naught minus sine derivative of cosine omega t minus kx and then we also have to take the derivative of this minus kx inside the so sine since we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x so that's going to put a minus k out in front. Then on the right side we have mu, and we'll do the exact same thing. So h y naught, we're going to have minus sine omega t minus kx, and this time since we're taking the partial time derivative, we're going to get an omega out in front from the derivative of omega t. Now we can solve for either e z naught or h y naught. Let's go ahead and solve for h y naught. We could do, do this by dividing the entire equation 
by mu omega and this sine term. And since the sine terms are going to cancel, what we're going to wind up with is h y naught is minus k over omega mu times e z naught. See now if you can go through the same process, but you're going to start with Air Ampere's law instead of Faraday's law. Plug in the analytical electric and magnetic field solutions into this analytical 1D form of Ampere's law, and then solve for h y naught.